It goes without saying that the makeup of most modern software systems is highly convoluted, and it's unlikely that the complexity is going away anytime soon, for a number of reasons. One primary reason is the use of microservices. Microservices are a contributing factor because when you have modular, single-purpose elements, it's easier to introduce and maintain them because of their independent life cycles. Also, they can be distributed across different environments as long as they can communicate with each other when necessary. Another factor is that a lot of companies have a mix of cloud and on-prem solutions that are integrated. In other cases, some companies have workloads distributed across different cloud environments, but they still need to talk to each other. You also have situations where within the same company, different business units with applications independent of each other need to integrate for some kind of purpose. And these kinds of integrations can also happen between independent companies, hence the complexity. So at a micro level, interconnections with other systems may appear relatively straightforward, but at a macro level, it's a web of complexity with different systems that have different environments, standards, life cycles, and more. Now, the basis for any integration is a need for software services or systems to communicate with each other for some purpose. If implemented successfully, it can provide very powerful capabilities, but that doesn't take away from how difficult it can be to achieve and maintain. And there are a number of things that you have to consider, and I'm going to focus on one domain or aspect, the security aspect, and more specifically, software identity management. Here's an analogy. Let's say you work at an office building shared by a number of organizations, and the way to gain access to your specific office space is through the use of an issued access card tied to your employee identity and role at the company. Once you're in, you can freely engage and collaborate with your colleagues in that office space. However, even the engagement and exchange of information in your office space will be dictated by confirmation of who you're engaging with, or at least it should be. There's a foundation of trust just because you're in the same space or perimeter that requires identification and access control, but engagement in specific pieces of information should be restricted to certain personnel. Now, let's say for a specific long-term project, your team needs to work with the company next door that also uses company cards. You can't exactly walk into their office, show your card and say, hey, I have one of those too. The reason is they have their own trust domain with a separate authority that issues out cards to prove the identities of their employees. Your card is proof of employment for your company, which has its own trust domain and issuing authority. The other company has every right to ask questions like, how do we know you really work for the other company? How do we know you're allowed to know about this particular project? How do we know you're authorized for us to exchange information with you? In order for you to securely work with the employees in the other company, some kind of trust has to be forged between your separate domains so that the card which proves your identity at your company can now be verified by a separate company that has its own trust domain. What does this have to do with convoluted software? Quite a lot. If you shouldn't share certain pieces of information with every individual in your office space, that means to some degree you treat it like an untrusted domain. If there's going to be exchange of information with the company next door, that's you adding another untrusted domain into the mix. And as I mentioned earlier, nowadays, a lot of software services in different domains are communicating with each other for different purposes. Therefore, trust has to be the foundation of any communication in untrusted domains or networks. It's very risky to leave your software services vulnerable to exchanging information with any pieces of software out there in untrusted networks, whether they're internal or external. And that trust can be established by knowing that your software services are interacting with peer services that have a verifiable identity. An active verifiable company card proves that an employee works for a certain organization. To secure software communication that traverses all sorts of networks, we need our software entities to have a similar proof of identity that can be verified. We also want the communication between software components in disparate systems to be concealed and only readable by the relevant trusted entities. Now let's talk about how such a problem can be solved. Before, I used the analogy of an office setting and a verifiable company card. If we had to translate that to the software space, it would be arduous, complex, and almost unmaintainable. Why do I say that? Well, using the same analogy, each company most likely has its own standard and system for issuing an employee ID, a company card, and how it can be verified. 
Now imagine trying to merge several software elements from different environments using multiple distinct mechanisms for issuing a software identity, proof of that identity, and how to verify it. Back to the analogy. Let's say company A is working with 10 other companies and it decides to introduce new attributes or controls for its employee identity system. This now has to be propagated to every integration it has with its partner companies. What if company B decides to do the same thing and then company D, E, and F? Suddenly you have a big challenge of establishing a security standard and maintaining it. In the software space, the services or components in the system at large will typically have differences. So managing different software identity systems would have a host of challenges because of the lack of consistency across the software components in this particular domain. In this case, inconsistency increases the likelihood of misconfiguration because of the different attributes or controls that have to be managed and maintained in the integrations. Also, a larger surface area made up of different security standards and attributes increases the number of vulnerabilities to manage and makes it easier to miss them. So, where does that leave us? With a need for a universal standard, like passports. Passports are issued by a specific authority in a given country, but that same passport can be used to verify the identity of an individual in a different country even though it wasn't issued in that specific country to begin with. There's a universal way of encoding information into passports that proves the identity of an individual, as well as a universal way of verifying that information. This is enabled by a foundation of trust between the countries. In the world of software, this is where a shared root of trust comes in, functioning as the backbone for the distribution and validation of identities. So, to bring things full circle with the office analogy, instead of maintaining several security standards for employee IDs across different companies, we want a universal system that works like passports do, making it easier to onboard and manage the security of additional employees from other companies that become partners. It will also be easier to manage security attributes across the board, whether new ones need to be introduced or some need to be removed. More specifically, we want that for our software, whether it's container workloads, cloud functions, or virtual machines running in different environments. It could be in the same domain or different domains, but having a universal standard for issuing and verifying the identities bound to our software components would be more secure, scalable, and maintainable. And that's where Spiffy and Spire come in. So stay tuned for the next videos.